All right. The Algebra 1 test, LMS Solving Linear Equations test was last Friday. It was on paper, but we filled out a bubble sheet, so it's all multiple choice. We're going to run through it. The first one is the scariest one, which is probably mean that we put it first. It was Ms. Pomazel's idea. So, I would get rid of this problem and make it so there were no more fractions. If you're going to do that, you have to clear the denominator by multiplying by the least common denominator. 5, 2, and 5. What's the least common multiple of 5 and 2? 10. So that means I'm going to multiply everything by 10. If I do that, yes, ma'am? Um, this test, what was this test? Friday. Oh. I think, right? Friday? Was it Friday? Yeah, I thought we had our unit test last Friday. Yeah, that's what this is. Oh. <laughs> All right, so when we go ahead and multiply by our common denominator, which is 10, if I multiply everything by 10, then I get 6b minus 5 equals. Whoa, what, what do you know? Mr. Wall, can I finish that job being what Kale was doing? And then 1 and 4 fifths okay. is actually 1.8, so it becomes 18. This is a mixed number, so it's 1 and 4 fifths. That doesn't mean multiply 4 fifths by 1. It means 1 plus 4 fifths. Okay? Now, this equation is so much easier now that it doesn't have any fractions in it. From here, we can go ahead and add 5 to both sides. And we get 6b equals 20. Uh-oh. This is going to have a fraction. But the good thing is, since we got rid of all the fractions to start with, we don't have a fraction until we're done. Divide by 6, divide by 6. And so B equals that mess. Wait, how would you know the least common multiple is 10? Basically, I took the 5 and the 2 in the denominator and I multiplied them together. 5 times 2 is 10. But well, what about the other 5? I already have a 5, so it counts. So I got 23 over 6, and none of those are 23 over 6. Well, one of them has to be. It's just written as a mixed number. I know it's not B or A because those aren't over 6. Is 23 over 6 2 point something or 3 point something? It's 3 point something. If you were to type that in your calculator, you could go ahead and do 23 over 6 in your calculator, and you would get the 3 point something. This was the hardest question on the test because it had fractions. Are you recording right now? Definitely. Let's take a look at the second one. Second one is not a hard one. Second one is a property one. So if you don't know your properties, you're in trouble. What threw people off was this is subtraction, but it's only one step. How would we solve it? We'd add three to both sides. Which one is the add three to both sides property? The addition property of equality. We add three to both sides of that equation. Number three, Heather's work is shown below. This is already worked out, and here's what happened. Does it say where did she make a mistake? No, we're not looking for a mistake. She did it right, but somehow she still got negative one equals one. Is that true? Does negative one equal one? No. It is not true. That's false. What does that mean? Which means the answer is no solution. When she solved this equation, all the x's canceled out. There were no more x's which meant there is no solution. There's not even an equation to solve anymore. So we ended up with false. If she canceled out and we got like 7 equals 7, then it would have been all real numbers. But since it was something that's not true, like 7 equals 3, which is not true, oh, so it then it would be no solution. It has to be the same number. For Correct. It if it's the same number, we get all real numbers. So if it said negative 1 equals negative 1, it would have been all real numbers. But since it's a negative 1 equals positive 1, we got no solution. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Number four, this one's pretty basic. It is distributing. I want to give you a, a pro tip right off the bat. I don't want to feel like I'm hiding this from you. But since this was multiple choice, you could have just plugged in the numbers until you found one that worked. You guys know that, right? Okay. If you didn't know that, that is a skill you can use if you're stuck, if this is just too complicated. So I'm going to distribute. Remember that both of these are negative. So when we distribute, we have to distribute with a negative as well. 
So negative 3 becomes negative 3x minus 6. On the other side, we get negative 2x. And the negative and the negative make plus 1. Now we've got x's on both sides. We've already distributed. We can combine like terms. Actually, we can't combine like terms. Why? Because these aren't on the same side of the equation. So I want to get all my x's on the left and all my numbers on the right. If I add 2x to both sides, that cancels that out. But now I have negative 1x minus 6 equals positive 1. I add 6 to both sides. And I got negative 1x equals 7. Of course. You guys going to let me get away with this nonsense? Look very carefully. What do you guys see? What did I do? What do you see? No, you're exactly right. I made a mistake here. I made a mistake because I see this one so often. You guys are so focused on the distribution on the first part, you overlook the fact that we actually never multiplied negative 2 times negative 1. That wouldn't be positive 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, which is why this isn't a 7 at all. Ms. Sweeney, please call the office. It's an 8. Sweeney, please dial the office. Thank you. Now, if you go ahead and divide by negative 1, because negative x is 8, so positive x would be negative 8. Now, I did that in a confusing way, so please forgive me. Okay, I wanted to set you up to see if you guys could catch this same mistake that I see you guys make a lot, and that's why I wanted to show it on this problem. This problem wasn't a super difficult one, but I saw that same mistake over and over again. Okay, I'll try to be less tricky next time. On this one, which property is illustrated by the equation? It looks like it's the same thing on both sides. So which property is it? Everybody wants to pick symmetric. Why? Because symmetric means we flip the order, right? I'm going to tell you right now, it is not the symmetric property. It is the commutative property. And is it the commutative property of addition or of multiplication? Multiplication. Now, what throws people off is they go, oh, symmetric, it's just flipped backwards. But that's not what the symmetric property does. The symmetric property swaps the two sides. Okay? A lot of people wanted to do either reflexive for this one, which wasn't a choice, or symmetric. And the answer is, what's changed is we switch the order of it. And that's, and that's what commutative means. You switch the order of the multiplication. Next one. Wait. Are you going to that's right. Associative would have had to have parentheses, so I can rule that one out right off the bat. Okay. This one, I'm not going to plug in my answer choices because they're all ugly. That's why we gave them to you, because we didn't want you to just plug in the answer choices. So that's why they're all fractions. Well, I'm going to do distributive. I'm going to try not to make a mistake this time, so no tricks. You ready? 4 times 3x is 12x. 4 times positive 1 is positive 4. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 equals 13. The big mistake here, in case you couldn't tell, was that people don't distribute the negative 2, just the 2. From here, we can combine like terms because we have things over here that are the same. 12x minus 2x is 10x. Plus 4 plus 4 is plus 8. Now it's a two-step equation, so we can subtract 8 from both sides. 10x equals 5. And so x equals 1 half. If we divide by 10, we end up with 5 over 10, or 1 half. 
Any questions on that one? Yeah, I'll give you a second. The big mistake why this one was missed was because we had a negative 2 in the middle. We have to distribute the negative 2, not just the 2, which means that's why we end up with a plus 4 there. Equations. So our next one, we do have this question is symmetric property. Which one is the symmetric property? And a lot of people actually picked this one right here. But that is reflexive. You're dead right. That's actually the reflexive property. The reflexive property is that what you get is what you get. C equals C, 7 equals 7. The same thing equals itself. The symmetric property is when we switch the order. If B equals A, then A equals B. We can swap the two sides. So our correct answer here is B. A is transitive. What is C? That's why I think I think C. Well, what happened on C? They had A equals B, and then they had, what did they do to it? What did they do to the A and the, they added C to both sides. So this one's actually the addition property of equality. It's kind of weird the way it's written like that, because we normally don't see it like that. Normally we have numbers in there. But C is actually the addition property of equality. Give me a second to write it. Let's take a look at the next one. There's going to be a few people that uh, have missed this session because they have, let's say, they're a cheerleader and they have to go to cheerleading thing today because of football, or if they're in football, or if they have theater, or if they didn't have a ride home. So we want to make sure everybody had an opportunity. So here we go. This one has actually been on several quizzes and tests. Do you guys know that? Or something very close to it. What are we trying to get you to notice on this one? The parentheses. The parentheses, but more importantly, that negative. The parentheses are there, and then they're not there, which makes people go, oh, associative says parentheses, right? Are there any other things that deal with parentheses? Um, distributive. distributive. So the difference there is not that they subtracted 3. They didn't change the plus 3 to a minus 3. They distributed the negative, and that's why it became a negative 3. They actually distributed the negative, so it's not just minus 5x. It's also minus 3. So this is the distributive property right there. Okay. The giveaway there is distributive. A lot of times we'll have parentheses, and then the next line, we've gotten rid of it. That's what we use the distributive property to do. So we had we had parentheses in the first line, and then we didn't. And so how do we get rid of parentheses? More often than not, we're going to distribute to do that, at least in Algebra 1. Number 9, what is the solution for x in the following equation? This is what we call literal equations, which means we have no numbers, really. We just have a bunch of letters, and we're going to move them around. In order to get x by itself, I need to do two things. I need to get rid of that m and get rid of that b. Right now, what's happening to that x is being multiplied by m and then added b. We're going to do the opposite in the opposite order. So in, instead of multiplying by x and adding b, I'm going to subtract b. And now we just have mx. And now I'm going to divide by m to get rid of that because it's multiplied right there. Now the x is by itself. And my answer is A. Literal equations can be uncomfortable. They're going to be uncomfortable when you start. But you just have to practice it a little bit. It's not as scary as it first seems. You said this is a literal equation. Literal equation, yep. And so we have a whole quiz on literal equations that we can talk about, too. Number 10. 
Number 10 is another literal equation. We have an n that we're trying to get by itself. Right now, what's happening to that n is that we have an rt next to it. The rt, the r and the t, are both multiplying by that n. So if we want to get rid of it, we have to do the opposite. What are we going to do? Divide by rt on both sides. If we do that, our answer is n equals pv divided by rt. Last one we we're solving for x. Now, I like this move because we actually did two things at once. We divided by the r and divided by the t all in one move, which we can do. We see it a lot when we're doing multiplication division. Next, which expression represents the phrase? You know what? I'm going to be honest. In my class, this was the most missed question. It wasn't that fraction one. It was this one, which I was a little surprised by. Twice the sum of a number and three. Okay, so there should definitely be a three in there, so it's not D, right? Uh, what does twice mean? Two times. two times, okay. And what are we multiplying by two? The sum of a number in three. The sum of a number in three. So what does sum mean? Add. add. So we need to add a number like x and three. So x plus three times two. It's going to be actually b. If we don't put the parentheses, then what would it, it would say? It would say twice a number plus three. plus three. But it says twice, and then it says twice what? Twice that both of those things together. Twice the sum of those two things. So that's why we have to have parentheses. Let's try number 12. Number 12, three times the square of a number. So three times, that should be pretty obvious, and then the square of a number. The square of a number means we should have x squared, but g doesn't have 3 in it, so it's not that. This one says times, but this is a plus, so it's not h, which leaves us with f or j. The question is, are we squaring 3 times a number, or are we doing 3 times a number squared? 3 times the square of a number. So the square of a number... So we end up with a j. We don't want to do 3 times a number and then square that. We want to take a number squared and then times it by 3. English is weird because it, it almost sounds like either one of those are the same thing when I say them. But in math, we have to be able to translate it in algebra because algebra is very particular. Number 13. Number 13, I've put this one on three different quizzes so far, this exact question. And still we're missing it. And the reason we're missing it is because when we plug in a negative number, we have to put parentheses. That's so important here because we're squaring it. So if we have negative 3 squared plus 6, the negative 3 squared becomes positive 9. So that becomes 15 on the top. On the bottom, we have negative 3 squared minus 6. So it's 9 minus 6. So it's 3. So when we're done, this is actually 5. OK? What people are doing is you're typing in your calculator. If you type in negative 3 and then you press the square button on like an old calculator that used in 7th grade and 6th grade and 5th grade, it will, will probably do it right. It will probably give you positive 9. But if you use a graphing calculator, the graphing calculator follows order of operations, which means it says, oh, you, negative 3 squared, I'm supposed to do the exponents first. So since I'm supposed to do the exponents first, it's going to be negative 9. Any questions? Number 14, what is the solution to the following equation? Right now, it's 5x over 2 plus 5 over 30. Our goal is just to get x by itself. Right now, there are three reasons it's not by itself. What's the easiest thing to deal with first? The plus 5, we should do the minus 5. Let's just pick that off because that's easiest. We can also think about solving equations as doing order of operations backwards. So do subtraction, then addition, then multiplication, division. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 5 and I get 25 on the right. And then I have 5x over 2 on the left. Now, it's over 2, so how do I get rid of divide by 2? Times 2. If I multiply both sides by 2, 
get 5x equals 50. So hopefully we can jump to the answer 10, right? If we divide both sides by 5, 5 times 10 is 50. So first we worked, we worked on the easiest part first. We kind of, when we're solving equations, we work from the outside in. We peel it away like an onion. Onions have layers. Number 15. What is the solution to the following equation? Now, we could do the cheating method and just plug it in. That's not cheating. That's smart right there. We could just plug in the numbers, although I'm afraid it might be the decimal, so I don't want to plug it in because I just don't want to deal with decimals. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to solve it. I'm going to get all the x's on the right. That way, I can avoid negatives. Some people like to always put their variables on the left, but technically, with an equation, it doesn't matter so much. Minus 2x, minus 2x. And then I get negative 3 equals 3x minus 18. If I want to get the x by itself, I'm going to add 18. And I get 15, positive 15 equals 3x. Oh, oh, like at the beginning, why wouldn't you do, like, it says 2x minus 3. Why wouldn't you do plus 3 first? Like, why wouldn't you add the plus 3? I could have. I always, try, I always focus on my uh, variables first. So I could have moved the 3 or the 18 first, but I want to get all my variables on one side, and then I'll worry about the rest. Once I divide by 3, I end up getting 5 again. Oh, that's a plus, game, right there. plus 18. Sorry, my handwriting's, my handwriting's not the best. So we're trying to cancel out that 18 on that side. So it doesn't matter what you do like, you do yeah, we could have gone the other direction. Yep. Yeah, as long as when we end, we get an x by itself, we win. And in this case, we ended up with a 5 equals x. If we had gone the other direction, we might have ended up with x equals 5. Luckily, we know by the symmetric property of equality, that's the same thing. <coughs> Almost through number 16. What is the solution for b in the following equation? This is a literal equation. We have to get b by itself. I know for a fact this was on your notes and on your review for this test. And then, of course, on the test, and it was on the literal equations quiz, and the review for the literal equations quiz, we have hit you with this same one over and over again because we've seen it on the SAT, on the ACT, on the PSAT, on the SOL. This is a very common one because it's a common formula. But if we're going to get the B by itself, we need to get rid of that. Sydney Ellis, please come to the main office. Sydney Ellis, please come to If we want to get the B by itself, we want to get rid of the one half. In order to get rid of one half, we need to do what? Multiply by two. Multiply by two. We multiply by the reciprocal or by the inverse. So that means multiply by two on both sides. And now we have 2A equals B times H. I added the times in there. It's just a dot. But that's just to remind us that when we have two letters right next to each other, that means times. If I want to get the b by itself, I need to divide by h on both sides. And it looks like I end up with that right there. OK? Any questions on this one? This one's a super important one because we put it on so many things so far. It's even likely that if you took this test again, we'd put it on there again. Number 17. Another literal equation, but I love this one because it's just multiplied. So in one move, we're going to get rid of the R and we're going to get rid of the T. We're trying to find P by itself. Right now, the P is multiplied by RT. So I'm going to divide by RT on both sides, which means I get P equals I over RT. You guys going to let me get away with that? No. It's not that one. Don't move too quickly. It's that one, OK? They just switched it. They just switched it. It's just the symmetric property, right? We can put it in the other order. But a lot of people were so quick to do this. They're like, oh, good, I know this one. It's D. I can tell. Look at it. But it's just upside down. And if you're not paying too much attention, you'll miss it. It's like when people take the, when we do it, they take are you going to like give us the same test, like this same test? No, definitely not. Okay. But I expect you to be as good. So some skills you're going to need, obviously, just twice now, we've divided by two letters at the same time. That's something I expect you to be able to do. 
Another thing I expect you to be able to do is solve for a variable. This one's not too bad because we're trying to get a by itself. The a is right there. If I want to get the a by itself, I could move everything to the right. And I'm going to do that by subtracting 2b from both sides. I can't combine that with a 5, so it doesn't become like 3b or anything like that. It now becomes negative a equals 5 minus 2b. I got a little bit of a problem, though. That's not, that's not an a. That's a negative a. How do I get rid of a negative if it's a negative a? I can either multiply by negative 1 or divide by negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by negative 1. But when we multiply or divide on both sides of the equation, we have to multiply or divide by every single term. Which means if I simplify this, I get a equals negative 5 plus 2b. And if you're scared now because none of the answer choices are right, I want to remind you that the commutative property of addition says that the order actually doesn't matter, which means our correct answer is the one that has a negative 5 and a positive 2b. Number 19. We have the volume of a pyramid. This was on your study guide too, huh? Uh, the volume of a pyramid, one-third BH. We're trying to get H by itself. But the first thing we probably want to do is get rid of the one-third. How do we get rid of the one-third? Multiply by the reciprocal. And we get 3V equals BH. If I want to get the H by itself, I need to divide by the other thing. Twentieth, and so that cancels out, and I end up with three v over b, which is a. You think you might see this? Now we've done twice where we had a one half, we had a one third, where we had to then multiply by the reciprocal. So watch out for that. Last one. Solve this literal equation for b. There's a lot of stuff going on here, but we want to get the b by itself. The first thing we need to do is deal with that fraction, just like on the last one, except this time it's not next to it, it's underneath it. In order to multiply it by, we're going to multiply by 5 to get rid of the divide by 5. Wait, what were we solving for last one? Last one we're solving for H. And this one we're solving for B, so I need to get rid of the 5 that's over there holding everything hostage. When I do that, I get 5x equals a plus b plus c. At this point, I need to get the b by itself, so I'm going to start subtracting stuff. Like, I'm going to subtract the c from both sides, and I get 5x minus c equals a plus b. And I'm going to subtract the a, so I get 5x minus c minus a equals b, which means... It's that one? No. It's the one that has to have the 5x. The only one that has 5x and subtracts a and c. Oh, right there. That was all of the solving equation tests. Any questions? All right, remember, I want you to get 100 on this. So if you feel like you understand now, then I want you to retake it. So send me an email or send Ms. Pomizel a message and let her know, like, I'm ready to retake this. If not, then there's a few... Uh, exercise you can do in the IXL to practice this.